I'm Susan Schweik. I have been at Berkeley since 1984. I'm a professor of English and also of Disability Studies, and I'm Associate Dean of Arts and Humanities. I've done that from 2007 till now. I'm so curious about which ones people have chosen, but it's this one down here in the corner, um, and it says Corner of Sproul Plaza and, and Telegraph Avenue in Berkeley. Such a, a marked historic site of protest and struggle. And, and Can you tell us why? Well, to start out with, the free speech movement happened at that corner. It was literally about to what extent right at that corner outside agitators could come into the campus and put up tables. For some reason, unlike any other corner of the campus, that's the corner that's marked as the barrier between what's us and, and what's outside. And um, probably way before the free speech movement, it was the corner where people tabled and where people had their sandwich boards or whatever. But certainly at that moment, um, Mario Savio stands on the police car here. And of course, it's marked very much now by that plaque that's in the ground that I walk over every day going to work that says, uh, this is the property of the regents, and the regents decide whether you could be on this property or not, or whatever the wording is. It's a contested border, that space, and of course much of what makes Berkeley Berkeley is the fact that it has such a, a lively and vivid and volatile border. So here they are, and it's just a bunch of people. It, it's one of the few photos in the book that looks to me anything like my experience of Berkeley. Then it has this uh, quotation from Earl Warren above it. Each one of these is a personality searching for light in his own way. Their concern with problems is genuine, and I find them far more knowledgeable than the students of my day. I find them engaged in more good causes than the students of my day, and I am sure that after going through much travail, they will find answers to some problems that we have been unwilling to face. And this is from his uh, convocation address in 1967. Let's see. I guess this is my last one. It's right at the very end. This is the final text, really. I, again, it, what follows is just the epilogue. So this is where the book proper concludes. Um, and it's very meaningful to me that this is where it concludes, although it's complicated. So this whole section is student volunteers in community service. I'm interested in the text the last line of the first paragraph. Demonstrations began to look like superficial gestures, useful now and then perhaps, but the real human need was here, basic, beyond politics. So this is a very characteristic gesture of this book. So knowledge, the service the public university does is here and basic and beyond politics. It cordons off the entire realm of the demonstration as a superficial gesture and is disconnected from uh, the real basic work, which is giving constant personal help to people in their day-to-day -day struggles against enormous handicaps. So the sense that the university is designed for, urgently needed for, service to the broader community is very much there, but, but framed in this way that um, sees it as antithetical to, as the opposite of politics and of the demonstration. And the demonstration can't have any depth to it. The demonstration is only a superficial gesture. So this kind of um, community service is a deep gesture or not a gesture. Um, Students seeking ways to help in the Negro ghettos, the Mexican migrant worker camps, the Indian reservations are, that's deep work and not superficial gestures. Um, and of course, in actuality, these things were completely intertwined. I don't think many of the people who were involved in this work in any way would have had that surface depth model about what they were doing when they went to a demonstration and what they were doing when they went to um, work with farm workers, whatever. Um, nonetheless, I'm proud of this history. Lines like, often they had to find their own contacts and pay the cost of their projects out of their own lean pockets. I have no doubt that's true at this moment of time, and it's admirable. And 
I'm struck by the way the book ends here, that with all the grand contributions to the growing of rice and the open heart surgery and knowledge, the pure projects of knowledge and all that, that where they decide to conclude is student volunteers and community service. That's the final section. I think that's partly as a way of kind of sealing off or deflecting uh, the really gritty campus politics that were happening on the streets at this moment. But it's also a way where that energy really does enter this book. And, um, you know, it represents a deep value, I think, that this is where they decide to conclude. This is the final thing. And there's this... Um, Final paragraph. Most exciting of all to the volunteers is the university's own new goal of reflecting in its racial representation the total society. It makes me feel like could, crying. Could you just read the rest of it? Oh, I it? will. Yeah, okay. um, that's a very upsetting line to read because um, in the 27 years I've worked here, we have come further and further away from that. Not closer at all. Urged by Clark Kerr, the regents have made possible a talent hunt wherein students and graduate students counseling various groups watch for the brilliant but disadvantaged young, a Negro girl with an IQ of 140 who writes plays for her own delight and is a natural director. I wonder who that was a Negro boy from Richmond who has an astonishing gift at movie making and the warmth to go back to Richmond and urge the other kids to work for college, a Chinese girl who is trilingual and makes and plays ancient musical instruments. It's very much a book of 1968. And um, as much as I think it reflects, again, at, at trying to contain um, the messier, more insurgent, energies that were happening on this campus, it's, it's also a way of celebrating them. Um, and I like it that they gave students the last place, too. It's not the professorial scientists. It's these images of, of students working with younger people. And then this is the final line of the book. Not to find such people would be society's loss. The university not only seeks them, but helps them enter the university and stay there. Uh, that's both exciting and, and devastating to me, those lines. Yeah. Exciting because there it is. That's where this book concludes. There's a little epilogue, but this is the final line. And um, seeking, helping people enter the university and stay there. Um, educating the actual people of the state of California. Um, that's what it comes down to in this book. It's a very honorable heritage and, and vision. Um, and not to find such people would be society's loss. And um, The University of California today is doing a really excellent job of not finding people. <laughs>